Good morning guys, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome to the video. This weekend I am, well just for like the day basically, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri to attend the Physique Summit, which is a really cool event put on by my bodybuilding coach, Cliff Wilson. He prepped me for uh, my last four shows last summer and we worked together for like over a year and a half, I wanna say. so. Um, we got to know each other really well. He's like an amazing coach and very knowledgeable. And he and John Gorman brought like a ton of really cool speakers into the this like conference basically. And we're learning a ton of stuff. And while I'm not really like a physique athlete necessarily anymore in the sense of like stepping on stage, like I don't have concrete plans to step on stage anytime soon, but um still learning like all the concepts we're talking about and learning in general is really fun to me so I'm excited to be here before we get the day started I'm gonna eat a bite meals pancake meal there aren't any egg whites in here because I bought just like bulk pancakes and chicken bacon so I'm just gonna have this for breakfast before we head over to the conference and I'm gonna try to get a few clips that are like interesting but not too long-winded for you guys so stay tuned for that me, it's probably the worst way to diet. So what I'm talking about is maybe a female figure competitor goes to 1,200 calories right off the bat for 12 weeks or whatever, and she just does the 1,200 calories straight across the board. And the problem with no refeeds is you don't get a bump, and you don't get a bump in metabolism. You don't get a bump in leptin. Your your metabolism can adapt to that very very quickly. So if you just eat 1,200 calories for 12 weeks, you're probably gonna have hit a stall point before. A lot of people like I'm gonna use steady state because it burns fat right then. Hit cardio boosts your metabolism, it speeds up fat loss and everything over the course of, of a day or so. So it's one of those things, you don't burn fat right then, you burn it long term, it speeds your metabolism up. Um, steady state cardio has been shown to blunt protein synthesis. Protein synthesis when you turn on muscle growth. So think about this, if you do, and this, is, this has been done in a lot of labs, if you do a leg day, all right, and then you go walk on the treadmill for an hour, it turns, it blunts protein synthesis blunts muscle growth in your leg. So you train with your legs and you turn that switch on to grow, and then you go walk and it, it blunts, it doesn't turn it completely off. But the last thing you want to do, if you're a bodybuilder, is train legs and go jog for an hour and walk because it blunts that protein synthetic response. So from a performance perspective, it's very pretty clear that when we provide carbohydrates, all right, it does impact performance. So whether that's a cyclist with uh, time to exhaustion, whether that's repetitions performed during a resistance training bout, it increases the capacity, the capacity to perform high intensity exercise. Very, very clear cut. So from a performance standpoint, it, it, works, it works very, very effectively. And from a performance standpoint, you absolutely, it's in your best interest to have as much glycogen, must, as much glycogen in your muscles and in your liver as, it, as they can handle because you're going to perform better. That is your fuel during exercise. It is your fuel during exercise. During exercise, feeding carbohydrates during exercise, it's going to maintain blood glucose, you're going to feel better, all right? You're all, um, from a resistance training standpoint, the number of studies that shows that, that that activity will help to increase the number of repetitions performed. More repetitions, more volume, greater training adaptations over weeks, months, years, and so forth. From a physique performance standpoint, the primary reason to time carbohydrates is again to recover and replenish glycogen. Please welcome Cliff Wilson. Stronger, to become bigger. It's the same way mentally. It doesn't just happen, you have to make it happen. You have to kind of, I mean, you have to build yourself from the ground up. You have to build. And it really gives people a false sense of what is required in the way. Because if, if it was true, if you really hated it, Hate every minute of training, he probably would have quit a long time ago. I can I can say that with absolute certainty. He probably loved a lot of things about it. I'm sure there were moments where he's like, this sucks, but I mean overall, uh, that's just not accurate. Um, and this fosters an incorrect idea of what motivation and sacrifice look like, because we all make sacrifices for things we want. But this is not it. If you hate everything that you have to do to get to the end, you are never going to make it. I promise you that. So, um, I did my first contest. Anybody know what year it was? 1985. Okay, I was in seventh grade. 
I have been, my entire life, obsessed with training. I just love it. I've always loved it. I was a guy in school that was sitting there and writing and writing. And the teacher was like, boy, you really focused, John. But really, I was writing like training programs I was writing. Um, but I remember in 1985, it was track, it was track season, and I was really getting into bodybuilding, and I thought, man, this is really cool, I like this. And I, I was a pole vaulter, and I actually ran 100. And I remember I was pole vaulting, and my buddy who ended up in an ACC decathlete um, champion. He was like, John, look at, look at these girls over here. They, like, they were starting to get boobs in seventh grade. <laughs> and all the guys were like, you know, like, look at these girls, you know, and I was just like, yeah, I just can't wait to get done so I can go, go work out. And they're like, what's wrong with you? So there's, I probably had a few screws loose in my head. And I think just, just that itself is, is like, like no one pulls this thing off. Like I, I've yet to see someone go from, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was dieting uh, on, uh, I guess part of the cell as well was that you're going to sneak food in, you're going to stimulate things metabolically, your, your body fat set point will almost like magically rotate this way. And it just, it doesn't work that way. Like there's, there's, there's really nothing out there, both in terms of re like actual like research, like you need to reset a few things before certain hormones get back to normal. Uh, I've, and again, you've never seen it in practice. I've never seen someone like <clears throat> Well, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna say two things. Um, the, f the first one was, remember when I talked about your habits have to match your goals and what you think your destiny is? It's a really, the sport can chew you up and spit you out of your legs So stay humble and remember the people around you that are there for you and love you and never, ever treat them bad, okay? That's the biggest thing I can tell you. And so don't give up on the things that you enjoy just to chase this crazy physique. Because at the end of the day, we're all going to get old. We're all going to have saggy man moves one day. And, you know, it, 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 it's all going to happen. So I love this sport. I love looking different than the general public. But don't give up on the things that, that make you happy, I guess is what I'm saying, in pursuit. So what I would suggest to anyone is always be learning from people. Even if you don't think maybe you could take something away from them. Obviously, everyone here is pretty well established, so I listen to their podcasts, I read their books, their articles, whatever it may be. But you can literally learn something, good or bad, from most people that you interact with. And that can help with life, business, bodybuilding, really anything that you apply it to. So always be willing to learn from other people, from their mistakes, from their successes, and even step outside your comfort zone. Okay, so uh, first, just on the surface, um, staying in your lane is, is so important, and it's just something that, especially in the fitness industry, like you just you, you'll see all the time. Like stay in your lane and and and, and focus on getting really good at, uh, at that thing, um, and, and then like at a deeper level, probably stay in your lane in that um, like don't try to you know don't try to be John, don't try to be Cliff, you know. Do your own thing. There's like certain aspects that you have that are unique to you that you can do better than anyone else. And I think whenever you try to just strictly emulate what someone else is doing, I'm going to be the next, you know, John Meadows. Like, dude, you're not going to be the best you. So, uh, so for mine, I hope this doesn't sound too harsh, but I think it's important. Uh, a lot of times, and I see this so often in the fitness industry, bodybuilders, coaching, business, um, always remember that the outside world is not going to judge you on your intentions, they judge you on the result. Uh, there are so many people in the fitness industry with great intentions, but you know they don't educate, they want to help people, but they don't educate themselves, and they fuck people up. As I told you yesterday, all of those things were built from us putting other people first. Every single bit of success, every dollar, everything I value, every relationship, everything that I've ever accomplished that's positive in my life has come from putting other people first. But in your circle, in your family, you are an ambassador of fitness and you are an ambassador of what this industry represents. And my challenge to you is this. Go out, dedicate as much time, as much energy, as much effort as you can to helping people be better. Don't worry about what finances you're gonna get back. 
Don't focus on how much money you're gonna make. Don't focus on what size business you can build. Worry about how you can fucking help people. Because this industry needs people to pick other people up. And there's not enough people doing it. And that's what I have to say to you. It's been a day. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm ready to eat. It was fun, great time, but yeah, I'm ready to like chow out on this. Switch into the phone because my camera's dead, but we are at Qdoba for a post physique summit dinner. Super hungry, but I have a salad with chicken, pico, corn, guac, cilantro, fajita veggies, some queso on the side, and then we have a diet mellow yellow to share and day. some hot sauce. So there happens to be a Krispy Kreme right next to our hotel and the hot now light just happens to be on. What's up guys? I wanted to wrap up this video. I realized I never filmed an outro. So I am back home. It is Tuesday now actually and um, you're gonna see this outfit in my next video because I recorded a new vlog today but I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I think the take home message for this video is that you should always be learning and always pushing yourself to be better in all areas and I really appreciated the wide variety of speakers at the Visi at the Physique Summit this past weekend. Um, I learned a lot about business, I learned a lot about physique sports obviously, um, but a lot of the stuff that they were talking about can be applied to just any aspect of your life. And I definitely feel a like, renewed sense of motivation and stuff and of course motivation is something that you need to be proactive about and maintain on your own accord but it's also really important to know where like know how to stoke that motivational fire if you will and for me that's listening to people that I admire that I look up to and kind of take little nuggets of wisdom from them that I can apply into my own life so I hope you guys enjoyed the video it was basically a giant box of wisdom nuggets if you will like a 20 piece of wisdom and um, I hope you enjoyed it I hope you took the time to really listen to what everyone was saying and see how you can apply it to your own life so please give this video a like if you enjoyed it if you learned anything comment below what your favorite wisdom nugget was and I will see you guys in the next one bye